Okay, so I've just been sent this new device from Station PC, and this is the Station M3, which they're labeling as Entertainment Geek PC. And actually the box is pretty big, bigger than I was expecting. And it looks like they do some variations on this because they've got a four gig, eight gig, and 16 gig version. Now I don't really do unboxing videos, but this is something a little different. How many ARM devices come like this? So you can see presentation with some documentation in here, the device, enjoy the moment. And then we've got all the cables and everything in the bottom uh, with a remote control, uh, an 8K labeled HDMI cable. What's this, USB-C to USB-A. The power adapter is 12 volt, two amps, so 24 watts. And it's nice to see quite a chunky barrel adapter, not one of those really thin ones that breaks. So on the base, we've got some rubber feet, so it feels nice and stable in place. Got a couple of screws for mounting. Connectivity wise, ethernet, headphone jack, which is nice to see. Uh, we've got an HDMI socket and that power socket I mentioned. We also have USB-C, a USB-3 and a USB-2 socket. SD card slot and a little micro switch. And the top of it is covered by this. And as you can see, it's very nice and glossy. I think I'm gonna leave it on for now. So I've switched it on. There is a fan inside this because I heard it spin up, but obviously it only comes on when it's needed. And uh, there's some real attention to detail going on here because if you have a look at the first screen that greets you, we've got a picture of remote control. Uh, so it's asked me to press the back and the menu button. And you can see it's recognized it. So we've got English and you can see we can configure the edges of the screen, but I'm just gonna say, okay, ethernet connected. I'm not gonna bother with Wi-Fi. User agreement. Right, let's have a look at the menus because this operating system, which is Station OS, is designed for media centers. And we can navigate with the remote control. We're just up and down so we can flick through the different tiles. But also if we press the mouse button, which is this one here, I can then navigate by just moving this left and right and up and down, a bit like an LG TV remote control. So if I was to pick, for instance, File Explorer and then Files, I've actually got this SSD drive plugged in with some 8K video files on it. So if I go to an 8K folder, I can now flick through the different 8K files. So say for instance, I play this Morocco one and it comes up pretty much straight away and seems to be really responsive. So I press the menu button, you can see that I can flick through all of this. It doesn't seem to slow down the system. Uh, and if I go back and back to exit the video, go to the Japan one here, you can see it's very, very snappy, very, very responsive. It isn't struggling with these 8K files, which a lot of systems would really struggle with. So really nice the way that works. And I think these are playing in well, I don't know what they're playing in actually. I don't know what app because I haven't really got used to the system, although it is very easy to understand. Uh, you can see you've got a movies folder, all applications. Uh, there's an app store on here, but there's also a way of installing the Google services, it looks like. So we should have compatibility with maybe Google Play Store and various things like that. We've got the Aptide Store, links to APK Pure. So we've got loads of ways of installing things. I don't know what the Aurora Store is. Let's try that. So we can click on it and then it's offering to install it. And you can see at the top as well, we've got different links for games, film and TV, music and tools. If we go back to games, we've got Lemuroid, which is based on Libretro, so RetroArch, which will have really good support on Android. But a lot of attention to detail on this operating system. It's not one I've used before, but it is very logical and it works well with this remote control. So really snappy with Bluetooth. Clean up. Okay, so it looks like it just does a cleanup on its own anyway. System update. I would guess I've got the latest update. Oh, okay, we have a one gig update. So feature release, main interface adjusted UI details, new version of system upgrade application, UI upgrade, add the function of opening recent tasks quickly. Double click the home button, add a RIA2 download function to the resource downloader. You can download tasks. Well, I'm not gonna worry about those updates for now. So I can go back. Let's try and launch Kodi. And that comes up nice and quick. So add-ons, video add-ons. Uh, here we are. So we've got loads of things we can add on here. Let's go with Red Bull TV and install. 
looks like that's already done. And there you go, so it comes up with the tile and we launch it and let's see how quick it goes into. So bike and all bike films. Let's go for this one. Yeah, video playback looks decent. So I plugged in my Logitech keyboard because things like volume works straight away and mute. And also we've got things like showing all the apps that are running at the moment. Uh, the home button, various different things work straight off. So it is pretty much standard Android, but with a really nice skin that lends itself to a media center. Okay, so using the mouse and keyboard, so all apps, and let's try the browser out. And let's do a search for Station PC and have a look at their website. And hit search. Looks like I'm not gonna be able to use Baidu. Let's try uh, changing the settings general settings and let's change the search engine to let's give Bing a go. Now this might not be the same on the final version I guess I've been sent an earlier version um, so the software will probably be tailored to the region you're in so let's hit home oh yeah here we go so station PC and let's have a look at their website yeah here it is and let's see if we can oh yeah we can change it to English here so what we got, uh, there's a wiki, there's forums, uh, we've got products here. Oh, I see they do quite a few other products. If I hover over that, Station P2, P1, obviously I've got the Station M3, the latest one, M1 and M2. So if I click on the M3, Entertainment Geek PC, 8K video we've tested, so it's up to 16 gig of RAM. Advanced Station OS, which is what I'm using currently. So we know how great the RK3588S is, a super powerful ARM processor and uh, works really well. Emulates PS2, Wii and GameCube. Talks about storage here, look, M.2 SSD up to a terabyte supported and talks about their operating system station OS and all the apps that you can install. Obviously it's based on Android so it's super compatible. You can also watch thousands of live TV channels. I haven't seen anything about that on this yet. Talks about emulation as well. Let's, oh, and also that was Ubuntu running. So if I go up to the top and let's go for downloads and see what's available for this at this early stage. So I've switched to a Windows PC because obviously if I'm gonna download an operating system to write it, I'm gonna to need to use a different system. Obviously I could use Linux as well, um, but this is the download section I was clicking on before. Station P2, P1 Pro, you can see the Station P2 was very well supported with Ambien and also Emulec, which is RetroArch. So Station P1 Pro, a little bit less for that. But the M3 obviously is very new. Uh, oh, but it's got quite a bit for it. So we've got Fido S, which is Chrome OS, but with Android app support. Really, really good. Uh, Open Fide is like Chrome OS without the Android app support. And I use that at the moment on a Fide tab, which is also the same processor, 3588S, and it runs brilliantly. So if you want a, a simple to run operating system, that is excellent. But if you want a bit more functionality in your OS, we've got Debian 11. Uh, so I could install KDE Plasma into that. And uh, we've also got Ubuntu 20.04, Android 12. So if you want a more stock Android experience, we've got that. And obviously Station OS, which it came with. So it's a few days later, I decided to install OpenFide uh, and you can see the download is here. So I downloaded that to this Windows device. And uh, the tutorial just says to use the official rock chip tool so very, very straightforward. We're just writing it to the SD card. So let's open that rock chip tool, which I've got in an orange Pi 5 folder because it's the same tool for lots of rock chip devices. Uh, I don't know why I've called it Android tool, but it's in here. So first up, you would select your drive. You can see it's already picked my SD card. And then we're selecting SD boot, selecting the firmware. This is what we've downloaded, the Fido S operating system. So I've got Debian I've downloaded and also OpenFide. So we click on that and hit open and then just hit create. I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again. Next step would be to take the SD card out of my little mini PC and pop it in the station PC. So you can see that's in. Let's just switch these cables around. 
So currently this is running station PC from the inbuilt drive. So I'm going to switch this off and switch it off at the mains. Give it a few seconds and then switch on again. I can hear the fans come on so it's booting up and hopefully it'll boot from the SD card. Yep, OpenFide is booting up. And just to show it's running fine, so I could sign in with a FidoS account or a Google account or I can just browse as a guest. And you see I've got my browser here, so if we were to do, well let's go for YouTube, the PSP video 4K. And let's watch a bit of this. So full screen, let's put this up to, let's go with 1080 first of all, and do stats for nerds, just to show that that's working fine. And that looks lovely and smooth, doesn't seem to be dropping any frames. Let's see, let's go straight up to 4K. It's on a 1080 monitor at the moment, but let's see what happens at 4K. Yeah, copes with that, no problem at all. So let's quit out of that. Uh, well, let's just open up a few more pages. So Hot UK Deals, just to show how snappy it is, even though it's still running from an SD card. Uh, BBC Sport. And let's launch that. And we can scroll through the page nice and quick. Yeah, not struggling at all with that. Look, oh, accept this. And scroll down, yeah, no problem. So I'm going to go back into the original OS because I want to have a look at what sort of hardware it's on. I think that's probably going to be one of the easiest ways to find out. So let's shut this down. And I'm going to eject the SD card, but I'll just leave it hanging out there. Uh, pop in a controller. I've got my little Xbox 360 controller. And let's switch that back on again. And that's booting back into the original OS. So very, very easy to be able to switch between operating systems. You may have noticed the fan noise in FidoS. That's probably something that needs to be looked at. I'm not sure if there is something in the settings of FidoS. I only signed in as a guest account, but um, in Station PC, in this operating system, the fan is definitely controlled by the temperature. And I don't think it's come on yet for me. So even though I've been playing 8K videos and games, I'm pretty sure it hasn't come on. So it hasn't got hot enough to be able to need it. So I've been playing around with uh, Station PC OS as well, and uh, I've installed the Aptide Store, which was basically from the App Store section in here, super easy. Dolphin Emulator, which is GameCube, PPSSPP, which is PSP. This is a multi-game emulator system, and also Ada64. So if we launch Ada64, first of all, just to see which version I have got. So I've got the eight gig of RAM version, and the built-in storage is 64 gig. And if we look at the thermals, so it's running currently at 26, 27 degrees, which is very good. So let's go home and let's launch a bit of the Dolphin emulator. So I've only got one game on here, but that's all you need if it's Dave Mirror Freestyle BMX. So let's launch that. So let's go straight into a game. So let's show a bit of this running and you'll see that it is definitely running nice and smooth, not struggling with that at all. Such a great game and runs really well on these rock chip processors. Right, let's try a bit of something else as well. So if we go back, this I'll just leave it to show you how quick it launches from one system to another. So this is PSP and you can see lovely and quick. Launch a bit of GTA. I've also got some game saves on here. So if I load that up, you can see I can go straight into it. This is on two times resolution. Um, I've done more tests on the RK3588 with PSP and it does run it extremely well, even at higher resolutions. Oh, that's not, not much going on down there. So yeah, very nice as well. Oh, what's this bit? Must be a jump around here somewhere I would imagine. Oh, no, there isn't. So if I quit out of that. And uh, the file, I used a bit of the file management to copy over the ROMs and things like that. And file management is absolutely fine in this. 
so if you plug a drive in it shows up and you can easily copy and paste it's not as nice as a full desktop operating system but um, that is one of the weaker bits of Android but from a point of view of hardware support Vulkan is supported with PSP and also Dolphin so that's good to see although I did find that OpenGL seemed to run better on Dolphin. Let's go a bit older with Lemuroid. Uh, I don't think this is one I've tried before. Um, so I've got PlayStation N64 and Game Boy Advance ROMs in here and if I click on Road Rash that's got really weird um, controls on this. It's using the shoulder buttons. I think it's the left shoulder button to accelerate. I haven't bothered to change it because it's still playable. But if you have a look, it's such a cool game. So we've got, we can, we can fight with the other contestants, the other races. And Road Rash is such a cool game. And I remember finding this in 3D uh, a while back now, but it, yeah, it's, it's nice to see this in 3D. And it is, it is pl pretty playable. And as you can see, it's coping. Well, it's gonna be no problem at all with the older systems. Uh, you know, N64 is old now. I know that some, some games you can struggle with, uh, with some graphics things, but overall, yeah, everything I've tried seems to be pretty decent on these Rock Chip 3588 chips. And we've got all our save modes and everything in here. It's quite, it's quite a good um, emulation system. It's ni nice and simple to use. And all your settings and where you put your ROMs and everything uh, all comes up. So thanks very much to Station PC for sending this to me. It is very intuitive. The software is really well designed. I already knew the processor was going to be great, but the way this all works and how responsive it is, is super impressive. Uh, and also I like the way that they've uh, allowed you to install other operating systems, but also given you good tutorials, good download links, good instructions. So yeah, really impressed. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.